your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. President Biden vowing to defend Israel from any retaliatory attack by Iran and its proxies. But Iran is warning to the U.S. not to be involved in any fighting between Israel, Israel and Iran, uh, or, or else U.S. forces could be attacked in the region. Despite this warning, the United States did reposition some of its destroyers and aircraft carriers in the Middle East as a deterrence effort. We've got a lot to discuss here as Israel remains on high alert. Joining me now, spokesperson for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Tal Heinrich. Th good to have you with us. Thank you very much for making the time. Uh, Tal, uh, all of this uh, follows last week's airstrike that hit Iran's uh, embassy in Syria's capital of Damascus. And now Iran has reportedly readied more than 100 cruise missiles for a potential strike on Israel. Uh, with nightfall closing, closing in there in Israel, how is the government and how are the people readying for a possible escalation? Thank you for having me on again, uh, Tom. First, I cannot speak to the strike in Damascus. All I can do is echo the words of the IDF chief of staff and the IDF spokesperson uh, who said that according to Israeli intelligence, uh, that building in Damascus, it wasn't any kind of consular or diplomatic mission. It was a military base in disguise uh, uh, that served the Quds Force, which is uh, one of the branches of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the same uh, 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 you know, uh, state sponsor of terrorism, this branch that just sees the ship that you report about, the Portuguese ship uh, with partial Israeli ownership, according to what I understand. There are no Israelis on board or anything uh, like that. And we hope that the situation doesn't escalate any further. But we are ready to respond. Uh, we're ready defensively. We're ready offensively. If anyone is trying to hurt us, if anyone's uh, threatening to hurt us, as, as Iran is, we will hurt them. That's the concept we're, we're acting upon. And keep in mind that Iran has been threatening and attacking Israel for years uh, through its proxies in the region, October 7th, uh, with Hamas, which is over 93% funded by Iran, including Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the second largest terrorist organization in Gaza, fully funded by Iran. That was another brutal reminder of that. And on October 8th, Hezbollah decided to open another front. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will act, we will do whatever it takes to defend ourselves. A uh, tall new video uh, from earlier today it does show that IRGC forces raiding that, that Portuguese flag container ship by helicopter near the Strait of Hormuz. As you mentioned, uh, the, the vessel uh, and the company uh, that owns the vessel is at least partially owned by an Israeli. Um, if, it, if, this is, uh, if that is the case, uh, what's your, your overall reaction and, and do you believe that the Israeli government will see this on a, on, as an attack on Israeli interests that could warrant some form of response? So this is yet another proof of how Iran and their proxies in the region, you know, uh, the Strait of Hormuz, the, the Houthis uh, have been capturing ships there also uh, in the past, and they, they all pose uh, a global threat to maritime commerce. That's another clear uh, proof of that. Our um, foreign minister, Israel Katz, he just called on the EU and the rest of the free world to uh, recognize the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, as a uh, declared them as a terrorist organization and sanction them. That should happen now. Uh, and it's uh, actually very surprising that it hasn't happened in the past. You know, um, all of these proxies in the region, Iran is responsible for them. Uh, they, they take the, their marching orders directly from, from Iran. Iran is funding them anywhere you look around the region where you see bloodshed, where you see chaos, mm -hmm. where you see terrorism. It all goes back to Iran's axis of evil. Yeah. To, to all, you know, the prime minister says that the IDF has set up uh, for the ground incursion into Rafah, despite uh, continued uh, threats from the Biden administration and uh, suggestions very loudly and very publicly that they forego that operation. Just to be clear, when, when this happens, and it appears that it will, uh, that is something that is not the prime minister's decision, but that it's the decision of the war cabinet. It, it is, is that true? And is the war cabinet behind a plan to advance uh, on Rafa in some fashion. 
So in Rafah, the southern city that borders Egypt in, in Gaza, um, you see we still have four operational Hamas battalions. Uh, we're not going to leave them there untouched because we have decided as a nation that we're not going to live next to a terrorist enclave anymore. We will not suffer another October 7th attack, nor will we suffer 16 more years of missiles raining on our communities. That's not an option. Uh, we will act in Rafah because it's, it's a necessity uh, of our defenses. Uh, to, to, you know, to, to keep the security of the citizens of Israel. Uh, anyone who says we shouldn't go in there is basically telling us, uh, lose the war. You, you, you can live with, with another Hamas rule because they will regroup, rearm, and attack us again. That's how it works. One of our ministers said, you can't put out 80% of a fire, leave another 20% and, you know, hope for the best. The fire will spread, right? So we have to operate in Rafah. This is where, uh, you know, this, this uh, border city from which much of the uh, terror infrastructure and ammunition has funneled into Gaza over the years. We cannot allow this to happen again. And also, if you remember, I know that Newsmax covered it, I think uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, more than a, a month and a half ago, we went into Rafa in a very precise surgical operation right. and, and rescued two of our uh, uh, hostages from there. Mm -hmm. So there's no way we're not going to operate there. Uh, we saw yesterday, Tal, 40 rockets fired at northern Israel uh, from Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. It really underscores that the attacks on Israel are constant. Let me ask you this from the prime minister's standpoint. Why, why does Hezbollah still exist? And don't they need to be addressed along with Hamas and the Houthis in order for Israel to be safe? Well, I, I also just to give you the, the, the latest, the updated, uh, you know, yes, there was a huge barrage of more than 40 missiles over the past 24 hours. But just uh, a few hours ago, there were more missiles fired uh, towards northern Israel mm -hmm. and also uh, two, at least two Hezbollah drones uh, that exploded in nearby uh, one of the kibbutzim. It's called Hanita in, in northern Israel. So that's the latest. Now, you're right. Hezbollah is an Iranian proxy at the end of the second Lebanon war in 2006, mm -hmm. uh, the UN Security Council took a decision that yeah. they have to withdraw about 18 miles north of the border with Israel. And you know who was supposed to enforce that? The Lebanese government and UNIFIL, UN forces. What happened? Yeah. Nothing happened. Didn't happen. So yeah. we know what these international security guarantees mean, and, and we will act to defend ourselves. All right. That could be another front in this war. Thank you so much, Tal Heinrich, spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Appreciate you being here as Thank always. Thank you, Tom.